In our previous video, we went over what an agrogel is, some of its properties, and why you may or may not want to use it. In this video, we're going to go over how to actually create an agar gel and some of the common pitfalls. Now, as we talked about in our gelatin video, agar is a hydrocolloid, meaning that it can trap or suspend water. And just like any hydrocolloid ingredient, agar has a best practice for properly hydrating and incorporating into a, the base liquid that you want to gel. Now, agar itself usually comes in a white powder form. And your use for agar is going to range anywhere from 0.2% to 0.5%. So 0.2% is going to uh, set a gel. 0.5% or half percent by weight is going to set a very firm gel. So again, this is always going to be measured by weight. So you'll take the weight of your base liquid that you want to set into a gel. And you'll multiply that by 0 0.02 or excuse me, 0 0.002 or 0 0.005. So if I had a thousand grams of a base liquid that I wanted to just set into a light gel using agar, I would take that 1000 grams, multiply it by 0 0.002, giving me 0.2% by weight, resulting in two grams of agar. And then I would hydrate that agar into my liquid. Now to properly hydrate those two grams of agar into my base liquid. I'm going to add the agar to my cold liquid, bring this liquid to a simmer while whisking occasionally, simmer for four minutes, and apply some shearing power just for insurance. Now again, shearing power is anytime you're applying a force, like whisking or blending uh, to any sort of item. So here in this case, what I like to do, you, the little hand mixer blenders, when I bring my uh, agar to a simmer, I just like to take a little hand mixer, kind of get a little blitz for a few seconds, and that's going to make sure that I don't have any agar clumping up in the mixture. And just that shearing power I find helps to make sure that agar is fully hydrated. Now, once you fully hydrate the agar and you give it a good blend with a hand mixer, or you just pop it into a blender, uh, but be careful. I, I actually prefer the hand mixer because a blender will incorporate a lot of air into your agar gel, uh, and that air will make it more opaque. First, the hand blender is just enough shearing power to make sure your agar is completely incorporated without adding additional air. But once I apply that shearing power, I'm then going to pass it through a strainer uh, to make sure all particles are removed and allow it to set. Now, as we talked about in our last video, the setting temperature of agar is pretty high and it sets rapidly at about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius. But the agar gel doesn't actually melt till it approaches or crosses at least 175 degrees Fahrenheit, 80 degrees Celsius. Now, one of the major pitfalls I do see when cooks are using agar is they don't properly hydrate it. They uh, bring it to a simmer, but they don't simmer long enough. So you want to make sure you're simmering gently uh, at four minutes uh, just to make sure that it's fully hydrated. And then hitting it with a hand mixer like I talked about going to make sure that the agar is properly hydrated. But if your agar gel isn't setting, uh, chances are that's one of your issues. Now, another issue with agar gels is that it has what's called synersis or it weeps. So again, synersis or weeping basically means that a gel will leak water. So you'll see this sometimes, especially when you're making a terrine. We had this issue when we were making our citrus terrine. Uh, we would notice that when we unmolded it and let it kind of sit on a board where we could slice it, over time it would slowly weep or leak some moisture from that gel, which would affect its structural integrity and it also kind of dehydrate a little bit. So we were able to solve this problem by adding 0.1% locust bean gum to our total mix. And we would hydrate this locust bean gum directly into the liquid. And we'll talk more about that in a second. I'll give you a little bit of a tip on how we actually make our citrus terrine. So if it's not properly hydrated, you're going to have issues, synersis, or it weeps. Also, too, if left uncovered, it will slowly dehydrate. But one of the cool aspects is it'll also uptake moisture in the presence of moisture, or it will swell with the surrounding liquid. So again, in the example of the citrus terrine, we would actually pre-slice the citrus terrine, and this would actually make it more executable because this way we didn't have to slice it to order during a busy dinner service. But we have the 
advantage of then taking that sliced terrine and soaking it in a flavored liquid that was complementary to the terrine and it actually swell with that moisture and it would add more flavor and it would add more moisture to our terrine, giving us a better end product. Now, agar doesn't have a whole lot of inhibitors like uh, gelatin does, so it can actually stand up to proteolytic enzymes. Uh, it can stand up to high alcohol content. It can stand up to low pH. One thing that agar does have an issue standing up to is tannic acid, which you'll commonly find in teas or wine. So if you're making a tea-based terrine or a wine-based gel, you might have issues. However, this can be countered with the addition of glycerol. Now, agar's ability to gel can be inhibited when it's heated for a prolonged period of time outside of the range of 5.5 .5 or eight on the pH scale. However, when we use the agar to set our winter citrus terrine, we actually uh, heat the agar or we simmer the agar in the citrus juice, which has a pH of around 3.2, and we simmer for four minutes to fully hydrate it, and we've never had an issue with our agar setting. So when I say prolonged heating outside of this pH range, it means you have to really heat it for a long time, and I've never actually had agar not work because of this issue for me. Now, because I've used it in numerous examples in both our gelatin and agar video series, I'm gonna go over with you real quick just the basic formulation of how we make our winter citrus terrine. So the quick rundown is set the citrus supremes and any juice that comes from the supremes at 100%. Multiply that by 0.1, which is gonna give you 10% sugar, and 0.01, which is gonna give you 1% salt and you wanna add the weight of your citrus supremes and juice plus sugar and salt together to get the total weight of your ingredients for this terrine. You're then gonna multiply the total weight by 0.3% or 0.003, which is gonna give you the amount of agar that you need, and multiply it by 0.1% or 0.001, which is gonna give you the total weight of locust bean gum that you're going to need. Separate the juice from the supremes and disperse in the juice your agar and your locust bean gum, and then heat the Supremes to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 33 degrees C, and then combine with the juice, place in a terrine mold lined with plastic wrap, and allow to set, slice, and serve. So a couple of the finer points is, we heat these Supremes just to get them hot enough so when that juice dispersed with the agar and locust bean gum, hits the Supremes if they're cold, if they're at room temperature or below, then those cold Supremes are gonna to start to set our agar gel before we are able to fully incorporate. So what we'll do is we'll place the Supremes in a perforated pan over a steamer because the steam is a nice gentle heat. We'll heat them to, they're about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but basically we don't even measure this, we just go by touch. So once they feel warm to the touch, we'll place them in a mixing bowl with our juice that has the agar agar and the locust bean gum dispersed in it. And again, the locust bean gum is there to keep our gel from weeping. We'll mix them together really quick, place it in a terrine mold lined with plastic wrap, and then allow it to set. Now, I hope you enjoyed our video series on agar agar. I am going to do one more video contrasting uh, agar and gelatin to see why you might want to use one or the other in a side-by-side -side example. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, that you would like to be answered based upon food science or cooking techniques, please go ahead and shoot me an email, jacob at stellaculinary.com. And don't forget to sign up for our free email newsletter at stellaculinary.com newsletter.